check out my radical desktop background. It's Rooney Mara, um, the uh, the uh, the popular star of the girl with the dragon tattoo, uh, the social network, uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo as Elizabeth Salen, the social network as what the fuck was her character's name? Oh, of course it was for Erica Albright's a bitch. I remember that. Um, and Carol as Therese Belovet. Uh, let, let us now continue with the Subspace Emissaries World's Conquest. Florence Foster Jenkins, um, Meryl Streep was nominated for an Oscar for that. She didn't deserve it. Hugh Grant did, however. I think he should have been nominated in the category of Best Supporting Actor. But, I think I mentioned that once or twice. But, uh, too bad. Uh, they don't, they don't make them to cater to my specific wants and, uh, needs. Which is too bad, really. I think I should hold my own Oscars. In which Hugh Grant would have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor. For his outstanding work in Florence Foster Jenkins, which is perhaps his best performance since About a Boy. <clears throat> um... Okay, um... Chapter 39 of, of the Subspace Emissaries uh, World's Conquest. Um, yeah. This is, um, okay. Author's note. Well, this is the final chapter of this arc. I can't believe this is, by far, the longest battle in the whole story. Of course, the final battle will be a lot longer, but I hope you like it. Read, enjoy, and review, please. This chapter is alternately titled... Um, in the, well, in the, in the little drop-down box, it's Unnecessary Rock and Roll... Unnecessary rock and roll? Your guess is as good as mine. To quote Coldplay, um, and it's also called Live and Learn, this is Die and Forget, Space Colony Arc, Space. Uh, mission, defeat Sonic, Shadow, and the Biohazard, B Biohazard? What the fuck was that? The Biohazard, once and for all, and save the Earth from the collision. The music is apparently called Live and Learn, Fuck you on two counts this time because not only did you did you try and put a fucking soundtrack in your your fucking story, and the only other person to have done that was um was uh fuck Alan Partridge in his celebrated autobiography I Partridge. We need to talk about Alan. Look at his beautiful fucking face, in which um he he also includes. A, uh, a, where is it? Where the fuck is it? Where the fuck is it? Oh no, it's at the end, isn't it? Okay, let's see. Hold on. Give me a, oh fuck, shit. Give me a, uh, give me just one moment. I'll, uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, yep. Um, as you can see, he has a soundtrack. But, um, that's, um, that's a, that's a fake autobiography written by a fictional character. And this is a gargantuan super fan fiction spanning 220 chapters and over 4 million words. And consequently, you don't really need to waste time with such petty, unimportant matters as giving your fucking text-based story there's no visual aspect to it, aside from the words that are imprinted on the page. There's no visual aspect, it's just story. You know, it's just the narrative. So why would you waste time pretending that this is some sort of video game? Particularly given that at the moment they aren't even in a video game, they're in a fucking anime. It doesn't, doesn't really make any sense, I don't really see why you'd waste your time with, with, with something like that. But also, the other reason why I say fuck you or a channel of Chris is because the so I think I think you'll find the song is actually entitled Escape from the City and I oh, the only reason I know that is because I've watched a lot of um of uh um you know this I don't know. I just um I, I just, 
I to this totally hasn't been how I've been spending my uh, time over the last month or so. Honest, honest. That's where I. That's but fun fact. The reason all my episode titles are so odd, I took inspiration from that series, from the Game Grumps. They always had an interesting episode title. And consequently, I thought it would be fun to try that out myself. Live and learn. Get ready. Okay, it's time for summon a real Eon. Whatever that means, I guess. Chris focused his mat. That sounds like a fucking summon a real Eon. That sounds like a fucking Journey song or something. What? What is this? Is he still doing the Final Fantasy bullshit? I guess I'll find out soon enough. Chris focused his magic once again into his staff and pointed it at the space as the energy was gathering. Unfortunately, Lene came again, chirping happily. Que, she said. No, Lene, you go, go away. You can't be here now. This is my favorite Oasis album. <laughs> Chris said, trying to dismiss Lene, but she pressed her beak at him in affection. Stop it, please. Stop it, Ron. I just was watching Philosopher's Stone yesterday. Sorry, Sorcerer's Stone yesterday. It's it's better than I remembered it being. It's good fun. Although the CGI is absolutely disgusting. I mean, if you compare Lord of the Rings from 2001 to Harry Potter from 2001, it's, I mean, the, the, it, it's ridiculous, you know, it's, it's crazy how, how many leaps and bounds, how many fucking light years ahead of, of, of the Potters, um, Lord of the Rings was. The Potters, whatever. Um, stop it, stop it, please. I think you should stay away from this battle. Roy said. Behind you, Chris shouted, pointing behind Roy. Huh? Roy turned his back and he received a powerful punch in the chin by Super Sonic. Roy was sent soaring in the air, but Super Shadow kicked him back at the floor. What fucking floor? They're in space! What fucking floor? <sighs> I've done nothing in this part. I've just rambled and read about two lines. I'm gonna fucking stop. This is stupid. 